are we going to find out during the whole uh, master class? Yeah, that's what we're going to find out in the master class is some of the regional differences uh, from country to country. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, right before we begin with the master class, again, I invite all of you, if you'd like to uh, do a blow by blow online of this one, please use the uh, hashtag uh, Costa London Style, of course, the Twitter idea, Costa Coffee Baby. So, uh, Let's get a show of the room. Let's start the master class. And we start off with our cupping session. Correct. Well, so, Gennaro, Gennaro, please. Thank you. So, thank you once again. And just to um, summarize the next uh, hour, hour and a half, in front of you, you have what we, back in Lambeth, call a cupping session. After the cupping session, uh, we'll be moving over to the espresso machine to your left. Where I'll be taking you through a, an espresso masterclass. Okay. Obviously, this because your, your seats will be filmed, a lot of it will be up on the screens. But again, I want to make this as an, as an engaging, as a, as much of an interactive session as possible. So please do ask questions as we go along. That's the best way to learn. So what I've done if, uh, in front of you today is try to replicate the cutting session that we do in our laboratory at the roastery in Atlanta, London. And the purpose of the public session is for myself and my team primarily to ensure that the copies that are coming into the roastery meet the conforming standard. And that's the first thing we're doing. So it's not about people saying, oh, did you like that coffee or not? I'm not there to say whether I like that cup of coffee or not. I'm there to ensure that the raw ingredient or one of the raw oranges that are going to go into the Mocca Italia blend is right. So before I move on, what is the Mocca Italia blend? Well, the Mocca Italia blend is the combination of coffee beans. It's the blend that every single barista around the world, from the Philippines to Ireland, going through uh, Dubai, India, all the countries, the 30 countries that Costa Coffee is in, is what we produce in London. And that's a blend. What's in front of you today are not blends. It's a single origin coffee, single Arabicans. Now the Mocha Italian blend is predominantly made up of a number of different Arabica coffees from around the world. But there is also a small element of the blend that is made from Robusta, the Robusta beef. Why? Because the Arabica is, is giving aroma, essentially aroma, and it's giving some of the finer, more delicate um, aromas and flavors in the coffee. The robusta, on the other hand, is playing a very, very important part, albeit it doesn't, it's not renowned and known for what I've just mentioned of the Arabica. Robusta is more renowned for its body. And to remember that, just use the word robusta. It's a more robust bean. What it does add to the mocha Italia, which you'll see in our cappuccino, in our flat white, is that wonderful dark hazelnut brown coffee uh, look. And we believe that the robusta element is giving body to the coffee, is giving you the kick, and is also enhancing the flavor. I don't believe that a pure Arabica coffee or blend can give you that same element of richness and color. That is why the robusta is so important for us. So, moving away now from the Mocha Italia blend, going back to the single origins. In front of you, you have three cups, or three bowls. If you just like to remove the lid. What's the first thing you notice? Color. So if you were to close your eyes, what was the first thing that hit you? Smell. Smell. Exactly. The wonderful volatility of the ground coffee. Now, you've had the luck that by removing those lids, you were, you've almost had the smell of a blend. Because all three of those single origin coffees have come together, they've merged, and they've created a very complex aroma. And that's why we blend. Okay? Because we want the good the great of each of each individual mixed together. There is not one coffee bean in the world, grown anywhere, whether it be genetically modified or not, 
that actually gives you the complexity and the roundness of what is required in an espresso blend. Espresso coffee, like unlike the other brew methods, is supposed to deliver a very complex uh, aroma and taste. And you can only acquire that by bringing different coffees together. So the first one on the table for you is Colombia. So to your left hand side is the Colombian coffee. What I'd like you to do for the next 30 seconds is just spend a bit of time and really get into the coffee, put your nose as far into the bowl, try not to taint, because obviously we've all put perfumes on this morning and, and done various things, so just be very conscious of not touching the inside of the bowl. Try not to touch the inside of the bowl. So do not put your fingers inside. And just say, yeah, sorry, I didn't know. Smells good. And is there a particular way to smell it, Gennaro? I mean, uh, like, you, is there, a, you put your nose beside it, how do you? Uh, so you have a question. You need to really, I find, close your eyes. By shutting one of your uh, modes of perceiving, you can really focus with your nose better. And take a really long, deep breath. So back in Lambeth, before we start cupping, as part of the rituals we were discussing earlier, we will also do some small little, I wouldn't call it yoga, but we do try to relax some of the most important parts of our yeah, life. So we the whole the air. Yeah, so I get some fresh air. So to your point, you really have to get in, close your eyes and take a long deep breaths. But do that with all three as quickly as possible. But by doing okay. that, you can really pick out the key differences of each one. Okay. There's Kenyan, Arabica, coffee beans, Indonesian, Arabica, coffee beans. So I'm gonna pick this one. Kenyan Arabica coffee. And it was Dinaro's blend because we put the uh it goes really beside the bowl. Mm. Not just uh, by the side but all the way inside the bowl. Yeah. Kenyan Arabica coffee bean. And this, this is Indonesian Arabica coffee beans. <laughs> so what I'm doing then, I'm really trying to get the oxygen. Not as aromatic. Not so as aromatic. That's going to be carrying mm -hmm. the aroma. Okay. Like so without me getting tainted in the cup of my fingers, I'm tossing the ground coffee, getting the oxygen in, and bringing the aromas out. I see you. Okay. okay. So who would like to just uh, having an open discussion? I'd like now to just quickly over the next uh, minute, minute and a half talk about some of the key aromas that we're getting. First of all, is the aroma different from cup to cup? Yes. yes? We agree? Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Yes. So what are some of those differences? Anybody like to share with you? Just make sure you don't have any ground coffee in your nose. <laughs> I've been caught out so many times. People from the far away. Like... <laughs> this third one is strong. Here's the slime. What do you say? Strong. The, the, yeah. the Opposite. One. The third one, it was milder for me. For you. Okay, so the third one really? is distinctly different. Yes, yeah. this one is stronger, yeah. the first. Okay, so... Before we get into uh, stronger, weaker, I'm trying to pick out some key nuances. So, if you had to use everyday words, everyday experiences, fruit, caramel, toast, oh, yeah. what Those would you be smelling? Which ones have particular nuances that we've just described? Toast. <laughs> You know, it's almost like um, your your really notes when you do when you smell wine. Because I think mean, that's my greatest uh, comparison yeah. to see what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, so this is number one, Colombia. Let's use some uh, some words on the Colombia. What are, what are we finding in the Colombia? So some chocolatey notes, some more toasty, uh, toasty. Uh, dark chocolatey notes. Yep, I agree. Very good for Colombia. Colombia is also quite renowned. For its, uh, for its fruitiness. Not elevated fruitiness, but some, some fruitiness. But some enzymatic aromas. Okay? Everybody agree with the Colombia? Some toasted, more currently fruity notes. Yeah? So very, very pleasant. And the reason I have Colombia, Colombia is quite a good one, because people can associate with it. It's quite a common aroma of coffee. Whereas I think the other two, we're going to start entering some, some newer uh, aromas, which we may not be used to as, as much. So the Kenya, one of my favorite coffees, okay. I love Colombia, I'm a massive fan of Colombia. 
because Calabria is a very broad coffee. It's uh, when you come to taste Calabria, you'll, I'll, I'll show you why. But Kenya, from an aromatic point of view. Wow. Okay, Kenya. So definitely more on the slight citrusy notes. Yeah. Some of those more enzymatic citrusy notes. Enzymatic aromas will typically be your garden peas, your lemon, your apricots. Okay? So there are small elements of those uh, in a Kenyan coffee. Predominantly the lemony note. Renowned for its citrus notes. Is that it? <laughs> it's, almost, it's almost like, I'll try again, it's uh, almost... Garden, I, I, I feel like saying. Okay, green, yeah, sometimes it's associated very good with, with, with garden, hence why I was saying that, and using some of the, the vocabulary that you're more used to. So sometimes we will dis describe a coffee being green. And what we mean by green being quite grassy, quite young, quite slightly, sometimes slightly immature, and we'll use those sort of uh, vocabulary. Exactly. And finally, and finally have, uh, the Indonesian. So, this one has one predominant nuance that stands out for me. And again, it's an everyday sort of smell. Would it? I'm gonna just wait and see if somebody can get it out. Come on, let's be daring. Let's be daring. Nothing is wrong. So. I can't hear it. Earthy. Okay, there's, there's an element. There's more. Oh, very good. There's an element of an earthiness there. Well done. Woody. Let's say woody. Oh, we're getting closer. There's I said, yeah, woody. woody. I very good. Toasty. Toasty. There's some toastiness, but not the most prevailing. So it is, as you say, actually there's a woody. small hint of smokiness there. Smoky, that's it. Smoky. So when you said that woodiness, that earthiness, we were there. Yeah. We were in that more natural sort of, uh, okay? Yeah. So there's a small